This is Dr. Darshan Pandya, DM Neurology resident. Today I will discuss regarding Miller Fisher syndrome. Charles Miller Fisher, the Canadian neurologist, described three patients having an unusual variant of acute idiopathic polyneuritis. The classical Miller Fisher triad is of ataxia, areflexia, and ophthalmoplegia. What are the incomplete forms? If all three are present, it is called complete forms. So what are the incomplete forms? If there is only acute ophthalmoparesis, if there is ataxic GPS, if there is acute sensory ataxic neuropathy, because staff brain stem encephalitis, and Miller Fisher and GBS overlap. First, we'll discuss regarding acute ophthalmoparesis. It is a very incomplete form of Miller Fisher syndrome, and ophthalmoparesis is the main or only clinical finding. It may be complete, affecting all the movements, or partial, affecting only the sixth now. Ptosis or dilatation of pupil may be present, associated with anti-GQ1 antibody. So first is acute ophthalmoparesis or incomplete form. Second is ataxic GBS. There is a severe incoordination. There is no ophthalmoparesis, no eye movement abnormalities. Deep tenor reflexes can be depressed. Associated with anti-GQ1B IgG antibody, these have selective dysfunction of muscle spindle efferent mediated changes that lead to severe sensory ataxia. Third is acute sensory ataxic neuropathy. Here also there is severe sensory ataxia without ophthalmoplegia. Rombox positive anti GQ1B with or without anti GD1B antibody. Fourth and most important is Bickerstaff's brainstem encephalitis. It is associated with hypersomnolence, ophthalmoplegia, and ataxia. So, not areflexia. Here, hyperreflexia can be seen in some patients. And some ophthalmoplegia may be absent. And anti-GQ1B or anti-GD1B is associated with Bickerstaff brainstem encephalitis. There could be a Miller-Fisher and GBS overlap. The patients of Miller Fisher or Bicker staff may develop limb weakness, which can overlap with GPS. Almost half of the patient, almost 50% of the patients who begins as Miller Fisher later develop GBS or Bicker staff brain stem encephalitis. Such overlap is usually within the first week of the onset of the Miller Fisher syndrome. So, what is the pathology? The main thing is EQ1B antibody, which is strongly expressed in third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerves and on the muscle spindles. So, ophthalmoplegia and so sensory ataxia and anti gq antibodies are conceptualized to result in ophthalmoplegia and ataxia as we discussed gq1 expressed in the reticular formation uh, it is in the reticular formation so it can lead to hypersomnolence somnolence okay and uh, what are the investigations that is required? This GQ1B antibody is present in two third of the patient with because of brainstem encephalitis and 80 to 90 percent patient with Miller Fisher syndrome. 90 percent of Miller Fisher, 70 percent of Bicker staff. MRI in Bicker staff may show abnormalities. EG is abnormal in both in Miller Fisher also. And sensory now action potential tend to be of lower amplitude. H reflexes are absent and F may, may show abnormalities. So what are the differential diagnosis of Miller-Fisher syndrome? One must rule out a brainstem stroke, but there will be long track signs, there will be lower cranial lobe palsies. Myasthenia is a differential, but there is different fatigable ptosis, chewing, swallowing difficulty, and rest helps. Portalism, there's a different clinical setting. Ptosis is present. Vernicus, there is memory changes. There is, here, there is no cognitive abnormality per se. Or brainstem encephalitis, convulsions, long track signs, CSF cellularity. So these are all the differential diagnoses that you should remember. So how to manage? It's a self-limiting condition. Both plasmapheresis and IVIG have been used in the therapy of Miller Fisher syndrome, particularly in the central variety or a severe variety. And prognosis are generally benign. They do not recur and have a favorable prognosis. Thanks for listening to my lecture. Like, share, and subscribe for more updates.